Okay, so in episode 30, we made it to the, the cave underneath the Serenity, not Serenity, the Sylvanas Temple. I did a little bit of exploring outside of the stream, and I saw these mushroom looking things. So I interacted with them, and we're gonna take and uh, we're gonna talk to them and see what's up. So just, but the difference between the last episode and this one is I kill I think what, two minotaurs and that was it. Now we're talking to uh, with uh, what are these? Maconid, the the Druger spores. I don't know what they're called, but uh, we came this way, and we came from up here. Killed the Minotaur, and then now we're here. So we're gonna have to see what uh, the leader says. You have a waypoint. Oh, we got a trader. Let's we'll see what he has to trade. If there's anything good, like loot wise. Ah, a visitor. You're a welcome sight. But let us observe the customs of the locals. The scholar's brow tenses. His voice spills into your skull. The spores connecting mind to mind. Blurg, proud member of the Society of Brilliance, at your service. <laughs> or perhaps not. Your mind is far more complex than the fungi. Understandable. We are small in number and rarely stay in one place for long. My colleagues and I are working to improve conditions in the Underdark. This need not be such a dire, hostile place. It's curious to find a surface dweller here. What has brought you down so deep? Truly remarkable. But why come to the Underdark, where they hold so much power? You were infected by an illithid tadpole. It's a miracle you're still intact. You must be worried sick, but have no fear. I have a friend who may be able to assist. Omelium! I hope this is as not good to go. Your exact word samples need constant attention. It is. This adventurer has an illithid tadpole inside her head, but she hasn't turned. Wait, what? That intrigue. Are you looking to have it extracted? Yes. Open your mind to me. Let us see what lurks within. As Omelum's mind pierces yours, the tadpole pulses with power. It feels ten times its size. Alive. Awake. Almost smug. This is most unusual. The incubation period should be complete, as should your transformation. But the lava is infused with strange magic. It appears to be in some form of stasis. physical and magical influence lovely and even without the shield the extraction would involve severe cranial trauma uh are we just doomed then <clears throat> death it means you would have to die first to extract the tadpole
the design was lost when the Gith rebelled and ended our dominion. Of course. I am sorry I cannot assist you in its removal. But I have an idea. Oh, perhaps I should start taking notes. There may be a way to bypass that stasis. There are many alchemical substances that can influence the mind. I do not intend to shatter its protection. I need only bypass the interference that prevents me from communicating with the lava. This is so sketchy. A tincture distilled from a collection of rare mushrooms. They have subtle psionic influence. I would require a fresh tongue of madness and Timask spores. But be warned, in their natural state, both of these mushrooms can be quite dangerous. Timasks cause confusion in those that approach them. The tongue is self-explanatory. My formula will hamper the more harmful effects once the mushrooms are brewed into a potion. Your sanity, however much you possess, should remain intact. The Underdark, of course, although they are quite rare, and their discovery perilous. Mm. I imagine Lenore would have them in her possession. She served Mistra as a cleric. She is quite fond of her garden. Lenore has always been a lonely sort. Uh, nature was her only companion. I offered her the chance to join the society, but she refused. Her experiments on Sousa Bark took priority. May your travels be safe and swift. Welcome back. Have you made any new discoveries? I just want to see what he I has to trade. Enjoy a good bargain. If anything in my private collection is to your liking. Hmm. That's not bad. That's actually pretty good for him I don't know that's the resistance is slashing damage vulnerable to mm. how much are we talking about here two grand how much should I get for the warhammer wowzers It's probably not even worth, but they're right, the magic missiles, right? Which I already have as a spell. Now it does an additional 1d4, so I could, that's three. So I'm doing another, I'm doing basically 3d4, right? Plus another 3d4. Well, for each. But I, my math is probably wrong here, but. Uh, let's go sell some of this garbage here that we don't need. Barter? Perfect. This is the slashing. Very 
Very well. I have mushrooms to catalog. Now, if I can cover over magic missiles. How is your more personal research So that should do a lot more damage. Let's uh, save. We'll rest up because we're low on health. And we'll see if the, what the boys have to say. This is a long way out of camp, too. Damn thing. Has to open, surely. Has to do something. Shadowheart's attention is consumed by a strange box that she turns over in her hands. The box is inscribed with unfamiliar glyphs. Well, I failed the Arcana, so we're going to keep loading until we get, like, the perfect outcome for Shadowheart. I want to know everything. If the game feels like loading. We still have to talk to the big boy who runs this campsite. But, so we're gonna... Camp. Damn thing. It has to open, surely. It has to do something. Shadowheart's attention is consumed by a strange box that she turns over in her hands. The box is inscribed with glyphs similar to those used by the Githyanki. In an instant, Shadowheart hides the box from view. Keep out of it. I'm being interrupted, that's what. We can talk later. This sassy little thing. Ah, good evening to you. Take it you're here to pick me up on that bedtime story you were promised. Actually, before we move on to the story, there's something I'd like you to consider. You spent the other night with someone else, and I hope it was all you wanted it to be, but... We shared a romantic moment of the mind while cloaked in the weave, didn't we? And I seem to recall a fond allusion to that moment afterwards. Allow me to make the following proposition. There's a book that circulates in Arm detailing the first thousand nights of a newlywed king and queen. They turned everything they did into an art. The art of conversation, the art of taste, time-honored and newly acquired. The art of the body, the exploration and acceptance of the self and the other, the art of the night itself. I say... We take a page from their book. I'm so down. Uh. What do you mean betray Shadowheart? I'm many things, but Koi is not one of them. What do you say? That's because I'm full of delights. We'll let the night run its course. And when everything is quietening down, safe in the arms of sleep, I'll come by and find safety in yours. Interesting. We're not going to save here. Mm-hmm, okay. What? Okay. <laughs> I, I guess not then. 
I guess the game doesn't want Papa Gale. The sovereign's thick fingers stroke the corpse at its feet. A droning melody greets you as the creature turns its gaze to you. Flesh talker, I show you a memory. Watch and listen. A violent vision grips you. Dwega, dark dwarves. Chopping myconid remains. They broke our peace. They killed our young. The sovereign's song slows to the pace of a dirge. It is still in mourning. We laid waste to many, but intruders remain. The Sovereign's song halts as it measures your worth. I sense your resolve. You will find Dwega invade us near Lake's edge. Cleanse the rot. Destroy them. Dwega invade us? We can manage that. Better than picking this fight, surely. An illusion comes over you. A Dwegar choking on a cloud of gleaming dust. I can spare you no warrior. Too many were lost. But accept this gift. It will help you exterminate. The Sovereign gifts you one more vision. A wall of vines, parting to reveal glow. Riches of magic and mind, cleanse the rot, and they are yours. You do the circle a service. We will await word. Deep purple swirl into familiar shapes. Gnomes in mining gear. Chased by Dwega. The Dwega seek a gnome. It is a guest. It replies with an echoing screech and returns its gaze to the corpse. Unusual spores waft from the decaying flesh. I'm gonna save here. I'm so the dwarf. Hostile, Dragar, Moon. Jeez, this place is huge. Damn it all. Oh, what, why did we lose health? Probably the spores. Be enough to cover rent. Flesh walker, tongue talker. Far you've come. Reach into memory. Tell me of home. Hmm. shivers in response to the deathly tomb and reveals its own home a humid cove filled with decaying myconid corpses
that's really nice. 44 HP. It's decent. Can I give him any gear? Like... What, what, what is he like? Hmm... Can I give him anything? That's the thing. Like, can I give him a bow? Can I give him a helmet? What about a necklace? I don't think I can. I don't think I can. That's fine with me. We got actual help. So that's good. Because I'm pretty sure he won't be able to get health in. I think we just, this is the way we came in, right? Yeah. So I think we were supposed to talk to another trader. Is there level fours and fives? And we're still level four. I think there was a trader here we were supposed to talk to before, before we got interrupted by him. The trader was here. So. We're gonna save again. Oh, there she is. Seems the shrooms are letting in more people every day. You see a fella on his own on your way in. Dwarf. Balin's his name. Right. Never mind. Knock yourself out. But don't come begging for coin if you find him. You try to ransom him to me. You'll find yourself skint and stuck with a fat old lout. My useless husband. Sent him for an errand. It's no surprise he's made a mess of it. Bald. Blue tunic. Dumb as a stick. But that's also Swiss she sells as well. Uh, okay, it's fine. I mean, we're not melee attacking with her anyway, so the gloves or whatever. I mean, this is all kind of all trash, to be honest. No good rings. No real differences in armor. The potion visibility is nice. But, I don't know. Doesn't seem like uh, stuff that we need. So... So map wise, we're gonna have to go this way to find uh, Balin. So we're gonna save game again. I know I'm saving game way too much, but I never want to make uh, a mistake. I'm uh, gonna camp again to heal up, and then we're gonna go out. Unless Gail wants to talk again. So, we found an artifact rife with magic. It's just the thing I need. May I? Thank you. That's two artifacts I gave him already. I can feel the storm abating. Yes, this will keep my condition in check. For a precious while. It's hard to predict the effect any given artifact has. But my condition is hardly a patient one. Rather soon, I will feel it stir again, like a distant thunder sending tremors through the soul. I will need to consume another artifact before the lightning strikes. There's no choice but to find more. In the meantime, my thanks again.
my lady, I bow to your boundless kindness. So, man, I'm gonna run out of artifacts. Hold on. Yeah, I was gonna make sure I'm not running with an artifact. That's a good start. So we're going to explore out here. Uh huh. This is like an old wreckage. So we're going to explore to our right first. Something feels sharp about this tree fresh. Someone's marking their territory. That's a severed arm. Interesting. We'll take out this because I don't know if I have to fall back at any point. Oh, a hook horror. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna save here, and then during the live stream which is not going to be uploaded to YouTube. What we're going to do is we're going to explore all around here. Find Balin here. Probably, well, assuming he's here. Bring him back to his wife. And probably explore, probably killing Hook Horror here. And maybe cleansing this area a little bit. Only 62 HP though. I mean, it seems doable. Yeah, we're gonna do that. We're gonna save and then we're doing a live stream. Stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, so next time you see this episode, we'll probably clear up this whole area and see how far we can get progression wise. So stay tuned.